come, and I am a lobbyist for work. Who of you hates Monday mornings? Raise your hand. That's quite a lot. <laughs> I want to change that. I believe that work needs a lobby because work is faced with a permanent shitstorm. When you take a closer look, you realize that work has a negative image in our society. We don't give work the chance to be challenging and fulfilling and fun. Instead, we're complaining about our managers, our co-workers, our projects. We're even complaining about Monday mornings. Let me tell you a story about my personal work experience. After I received my university degree, I started as a project manager in two bigger companies. And after a while, I felt like 85% of all German employees feel about their work. I was not motivated and not engaged. I missed recognition and challenge and opportunities for personal development. So I did my job as expected and dragged myself out of bed every morning and counted the hours until the next weekend until I decided it was time for a change. I wanted more. I wanted to be motivated. I wanted to be enthusiastic. I wanted to work on a bigger goal. And I especially wanted to work with people with a similar drive. So I quit my job and I found a new position uh, at Google. Google is known to be one of the most attractive employers in the world. And after uh, I started working there, I got involved because the topic of happiness at work had always drawn my personal interest. I got responsible for various corporate culture initiatives. And during this time, I learned a lot about a great place to work. As I've been working now for more than 15 years, I think I have quite some work experience. But on the other side, I still feel very close to the young generation Y who just started to work. So let me tell you my findings from the perspective of an older millennial who got the chance to compare the old traditional efficiency-oriented way of work with a more human way of work. Now I know what you're probably thinking. You're probably thinking a great place to work is all about perks, free things. I know there is a mythology about Google that working there is like living in a land of milk and honey, free food, uh, a free gym, lots of activities, uh, lots of company parties. Well, to be honest, most of these myths are true. And there are a lot of other companies out there who try to make their workplaces more convenient for their employees, which is nice to have. But my experience is, People get used to perks after a while. People don't value free things after a certain time anymore. And I think every one of us can relate to this in their private life. Just imagine this. You get free tickets for a very famous sports match. The first time you get these tickets, you are super excited and can't wait to go. But imagine you get these free tickets for every weekend in every sports match. I'm sure after a while, every one of us would say, oh, no, not today, I'd rather stay on the couch. So I say, a great place to work is about something else. It is all about the people and the kind of relationships we have. We spend most of our time in our life at work. That means we spend more time with our co-workers and managers than with our spouses, families, and friends. But we don't give them the same amount of attention and love and care, do we? It's so important to find the right people you spend your time with. Yet I personally believe that a great, fulfilling job results from 50% the tasks and the company structure, and the other 50% results from the people you spend your time with. So, next time when applying for a new job, it can be a good idea to have a coffee with your future co-workers before signing the job contract, right? 
So I say a great place to work is about the people, our relationships, how we treat each other, the values, the beliefs. I would like you to take a moment and ask yourself the following question. What was your best professional moment in your life so far? Have you found one? I'm sure you did. <laughs> Let me tell you about my best professional moment in my life. I was still studying at university, so I actually hadn't even started my official career yet. And I worked part-time as a job counselor for handicapped, long-term, unemployed people who had difficulties finding a new position. I was very idealistic and motivated, but my co-workers and the clients were already hit hard by reality. So I supported this older lady who was unemployed for, I think, more than five or six years, and the whole situation had affected her whole well-being. So we worked hard on this situation to make a difference, to make a change. I did a lot of phone calls, she did a lot of job, a lot of job interviews, and one day our hard work had paid off. We made the impossible possible. We found her at internship. So this lady started to work in this internship, and after a few weeks she came back into my office. So she stood there, with a very strong body language, flowers in her hand, a big smile in her face, saying to me, I want to thank you for helping me start a new life. My manager thinks that I am the right person for his team, so he offered me a full employment. Wow! We did not only find her a new job, her personality was the perfect match to that company team. This new perspective had changed her whole life. The feeling of being needed and being helpful to others had lifted her, and this moment had lifted me as well. That was truly a magic moment. A magic moment. What is a magic moment? Well, a magic moment is truly a moment that you will never forget. It can be a situation where you realize that you can rely on your coworkers 100%, or a situation where you brighten a client's life, for example, finding a person a new job. I think a magic moment, something between people happens. Something between people happens in a magic moment. A magic moment gives our work meaning. Meaningful work is about why we do something, not about what we do. And I think we need more magic moments in our workplaces. How can we do that? Well, we need to focus on the people and on the relationships. We need to cultivate a more human work culture. So, who can be responsible for creating a more human work culture? The CEO? The leadership team? Well, sure, they're responsible for a certain framework or the right mindset. And what I'm going to say is for all managers and all future leaders. A company mission statement is a great opportunity to remind people of why what they do really matters. And we all want our work to matter. Nothing is a more powerful motivator to, than to know that you're making a difference in the world. Where ownership exists, great things will follow. So I encourage all managers to give power to the people. Let your employees craft their jobs. Give them the opportunity to optimize daily routines because your employees are the ones who know your organization best. There is a very famous quote from Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs once said, it doesn't make sense to hire smart people to tell them what to do. We hire smart people so they can tell us what to do. But my message is, 
If we want a sustainable shift in our happiness at work, we need everyone within an organization to feel responsible for a more human work culture. As you know from other areas in your life, other people and circumstances cannot make you happy. Only you can make yourself happy. And the same rule applies to your job life, of course. I think there are a lot of employees out there who capture a certain taker mentality. They expect their managers and their companies to offer optimal conditions. But the truth is, all jobs have both, pleasure and drudgery. So when you're complaining about a certain incompetence or your manager, stop for a moment and ask yourself the following question. Imagine that you have to leave your job tomorrow morning. Is there anything that you would miss? If your answer to that question is, oh no, I won't, I won't, I won't miss anything from my current job, then I tell you it's time to leave. Quit your job and do it tomorrow, because you have a responsibility. You have a responsibility for yourself, but also for your company and your co-workers. Your team deserves your 100% commitment. But maybe your answer to that question is that you would miss a certain energy around an important project, or one or two co-workers, or just the free coffee in the canteen. That's great, appreciate it. I think we're not really good at appreciating what we have in our jobs. After a successful project, do you ever go to your coworker and tell him, hey, you did a great job? Or do you ever thank your receptionist for always being so open-eared? Recognition is such an important psychological need, but missing in so many situations, right? So I would like to encourage you to take responsibility for your commitment to your team. We are all longing for more intimacy in our lives. No, I'm not talking about physical intimacy here. I'm talking about really deep, trustful, long-lasting relationships. Statistics say that the average person has only between two to four really close friends. And that number is still decreasing. So my question is, why don't we encourage more intimacy in the place where we spend most of our time at work? It's the small things that can make a big difference. Starting with recognition, getting personal, building relationships. Instead of going to the next restaurant, you could invite your team to your home and cook a dinner together, for example. Or instead of giving away another bonus, a company could give away adventure trips. I am sure that team would soon forget the extra number on the paycheck, but they will always remember that special night in front of the campfire in the wilderness. The joy of money is fleeting but memories last forever. So there are a lot of opportunities to make work more human. And we are all humans. So no matter what job role you have, I would like to encourage you to consider what you can do to shift your workplace into a more challenging, fun and rewarding environment so that you don't have to blame Monday morning anymore and your attitude towards what you do 40 hours per week will shift into something more positive and enthusiastic. Thank you very much.